Welcome to the Hardy's Hotline. I am Cami Clements, the Hooked Hardy, and you all know me. I'm Sarah, the Hawkeye Hardy, and I'm still getting used to we we changed all of the hand motions around, so I'm I'm still I'm struggling. You should have just kept it. I sh yeah, well, I'm struggling. <laughs> and today we are talking to one of my favorite guest stars from One Calls of the Heart. Mr. Andrew W. Walker. Hi, Andrew. Hi, girls. Hello, hello. <laughs> welcome. welcome. Welcome, Sarah. Nice to have you. Thank you. I know you You know Cammie much better. You've had in-person meetings as well, um, which yeah. have been amazing. Um, but I'm thrilled to get to know you a little bit today. And this episode of Party's Hotline is going to be a little different. We're going to go full sleuther. Hey, there we go. <laughs> I do happen to have this. I had. I was going to say, um, with that, did you have that on hand? Is that? I so... had this on hand. Um, for my other job, we just recently did a fundraiser for our school that I work at, and we did an escape room theme at our fundraiser, and so I, I, I have a little bit of the uh, detective gear on hand now. So. Great. Seem to fit. Sarah, Sarah's the detective. I'm the mood maker so <laughs> well you're the you're the the wizard sure Just, we'll call yeah. it that. <laughs> so how the heck are you how you been i'm wonderful i'm doing great just blessed you know it's it's uh it's been an amazing year so far last year was tough for everybody i think because of the strike and mm. and um you know it was so you know, nice, nice to, for everyone to be back working again. And, uh, and, and I knew this year was going to be a bit busier than any year I've had in the past because movies had been pushed from last year to this year. So I've just been busy, you know, and I, I just came back from Malta before I, um, am back up now shooting a Christmas, Christmas movie in, in, uh, in Vancouver, but, uh, yeah, it's been a great year. Shot Curious Caterer, shot a Malta movie and um shooting a christmas movie so that is busy <laughs> it's been busy and i know i have a few more coming this year so i was gonna say there's the year's not even half over so it's not even half over no so did you um shoot both curious caterer movies back to back no oh we okay tend to take a few months off in between okay and you know they'll they'll at the end of the day, it's a business, right? So they want to see how the numbers do. So they oh, usually get blocks of two and then see how those do, how, how those do. And then, um, and then go from there. But the, the hope is that we shoot a five and a six. Um, if, if this one goes well, so. Okay. Awesome. So I couldn't help but notice that you and Nikki had quite the adorable spot going on with home chef. Is that is that a, a a permanent partnership or a guest spot for them? What, what what's the yeah, story was, on that? It was just them trying out trying new things and and uh, you know it's an easy tie in with our curious caterer movies to for us to have done a little cooking segment or you know ad ad for them. So yeah. they hired us for a couple of their meal plans and uh, it, it was great. I mean I I feel like I could be talking about lima beans with Nikki and we would go on and on and on for, you know, for hours and days and have fun while doing it. So, um, yeah, just another excuse to get with my, my on-camera wife and have, and have fun. <laughs> you do realize that foiled plans is going to be your eighth movie with her. If you count all of the curious caterer. And then sticks and scones is going to be number nine. So, yeah, this is it's crazy. It's a it's an amazing journey that I've had with Nikki, and she's uh, our our families, our our friends. Now we see each other at you know outside of we did we did the tree lighting. We did this this tree lighting together last year. Oh, um, in in Orange County, so we're, we're we're getting asked to go do other things together as well, like the you know, and also, and also the home chef stuff. So I see her outside of work doing other, you know, other work related engagements, 
on a every few month basis. And so it's, she's, she's like a permanent fixture in my, in my life. And I could not imagine not having her in my life. She's just, just a, a gift, you know, to everybody, everybody she comes across. I mean, you, you've spoken to her and you know have, yeah. the magic that, that, that she, um, you know, that she exudes. And so it's just, it's just incredible that I get to do these movies with her. And I think a lot of guys would just, you know, give their left arm to, to work to to be the ones working with her and i still got both my arms <laughs> um i i will say that i think that's one thing that i've really enjoyed following hallmark over the years is being able to see they that they really do pick up on when there's good chemistry and good relationships built between people and then they can continue working together on different projects i think that that is nice to you don't see that on a lot of other networks being paired up no, with I, the same people. Yeah, yeah i think that like hallmark is is it's different in many ways but i think that this is one of the one of the assets that make hallmark different and they listen to their fans you know and i think like you know like you're saying not n no network really listens to the fan base as much as hallmark does and we're it's a it's a fan driven community driven network where we're you know it's uh it's it's an it's a brand in its entirety like we're not there's a lot of like siloed, siloed projects that like CBS or ABC or Netflix will have their each individual verticals of movies that they do. And they base their numbers on that one movie that was a big hit for that year. But Hallmark, all their movies fill gaps and needs for everybody mm -hmm. across the board, you know, so like for all their fan base, you might not like one movie, but you'll love another movie, but the brand as a whole in its entirety. And I think that that's something that's really been really it's 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 we've we've all come together i think as talent like we're the let's say the the 20 people that work on a regular basis with hallmark we're at parties together we're at you know engagements together we're and we get the the ability to work with each other uh and people love those pairings but hallmark knows that it's you know there's like a few people that kind of need to be together to satiate the you know the the, <laughs> the the want or the need for you know for viewers to to see how it how it goes like they it seems like they're they could see it a hundred times they just want to see it again and again and I think this is the beauty of working with Nikki is that we don't go into it thinking like oh we just this is it people will watch it it's the two of us I think they're gonna have a great time watching it but we we came into this curious caterer franchise wanting to do something different and playing against a lot of those, um, a, a lot of our instincts, naturally, oh. natural instincts when we work together, which is like love story and the, and that, that, right. that familiarity and everything, but we want, you know, movie, it was a slow burn, you know, movie one, two, three, we got people were, they, they weren't patient with this relationship building, you know, <laughs> they're like, they got brother and sister vibes and blah, blah, blah. But we're really like, it's nuanced, right? It's nuanced. Oh, and yeah. we're, we, there's also a scare in these movies where the minute that the relationship starts, well, where are you going to go from there? You know, like, is, like it's already happened. So like, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do next? So we're going to see. I mean, it's going to be interesting as the, as this relationship, because the relationship does move forward in this, in the, in this movie. In this uh, next one. Okay. In this next one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is that is one of the questions on our list is the mystery wheels that they do on Hallmark do tend to drag out the romance quite a bit. Um, <laughs> you're usually movie five or six before you're getting a kiss or an actual date. So it's good to hear that it is slowly moving forward. Yeah. Is there anything you can spill about just the way that they are building that camaraderie between them? Yeah, well, we, you know, I think Lisa Hamilton Daly, who, you know, had a development for Hallmark, she, she's done a really great job in filling the, the, there's, there's lots of different buckets of movies now people can watch, like, you know, Paul Campbell's uh, Cases movie that he does, like, yeah. those are great. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's Paul and his, his comedic, you know, genius that he brings to the table with his movie. And then there's, you know, there's the um, the reboot of um, what was Candace's uh, movie? Uh, the Aurora, Aurora Tea Garden. Aurora Tea Garden. Yeah, and it's a younger 
it's a it's like the new next generation you know of, of of that and so they're really filling these different buckets of what people want and for us our movie is more of a dramatic you know a little more mysterious it's uh you know there's the the last one you know at certain points i couldn't let my kids watch it cuz it was cut, it was like spooky you know my that's yeah. spooky my yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so so i think that that's also for me as an actor it's just it's it it's so much fun being able to 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 explore that so i don't approach a hallmark mystery movie like as as if it's a hallmark movie you know it's it's, mm-hmm. it's this is a any kind of hbo or or cbs drama that i would be doing and so i think having the ability to to fall into this tom schultz character and and do it in the in within the 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 world that we've created in curious caterer i think it's just it's been so much fun for me and and now you know there was talks that the relationship or the the yeah this this love story would be moving along a little slower but because the fans and because we're <laughs> the fans we're like let's let's speed this up a bit so this movie i think people are going to really get what they've been looking for i think that's great i mean one of the things that cammy and i talked about a lot over the years is you know a, a lot of shows once characters get together then they they the shows end or you know as soon as they've which I can't have their first kiss or gotten engaged or or something and and a lot of the Hallmark ones have been like that as well um and then you get something like like Aurora that they were married and it was progressing and then now they've switched back to when she was younger so you don't have the romance again and it's it is kind of frustrating so it's nice when there's something out there that has a little bit more of that that's the thing that we loved uh one of the things we love most about Paul's movie is that they are married they're married to <laughs> see a different stage of relationship which you yes. don't see a lot in the movies um and i think speak- people really enjoy seeing nikki and i together too so yes. it's not like yes. as much as we were playing <laughs> that you know that wedge i think it's i think it's yeah yeah. The two of you make music together, if you'll pardon the pun. I I mean, oh, you really do. You. But that that actually, listening to you talk about the character of Tom, that actually brings a question to mind. Did you shadow a detective for for this character at all? I didn't shadow a detective. I watched a lot of movies. I watched okay, like, that works. Like I watched like True Detective. I watched also Knives Out, you know, because this was something that would oh, kept yeah. on coming back as as one of the inspiration kind of movies that we were trying to emulate you know and I watched that movie uh, which I thought was a lot of fun but um no I didn't shadow a detective but uh yeah (laughs) through the screen through the screen you did (laughs) yeah through the screen I did another question about Tom's character give us a little insight here i I'm having a really hard time wrapping my brain around how was he ever married to Jessamine? They have such different value systems. <laughs> Every time I see that part of the show come up, I'm like, I just don't see it. I see why they are not together now. <laughs> when I when I first <laughs> met Jessamine in the in in when the cameras were rolling, I mean, it's yeah. one thing to meet you know, meet the, the, uh, actress of of our side, sweetheart. Um, but when the cameras were rolling, I was like, Whoa, this is, it was basically just a, it was opposites attract. And we were, it was this, that's what, how we were playing it. it. And, you know, it was, it was a relationship that he had met her a long time ago and just, they grew apart, you know, and, and, and that's 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 how we made sense of that that story. <laughs> Sounds yeah. very sense and sensibility ish. <laughs> exactly. If you go if you go with Lucy Steele and Edward Farrows, they met each other, got engaged when they were probably fifteen, and then five ten years later, what was I thinking? <laughs> yes, yeah. I definitely think Tom had a "what was I thinking" moment. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about 
foiled plans, what you can share. This is what this is what we know. We know that Goldie is asked to cater a medieval ball fundraiser, and she's really excited because she's creating authentic medieval dishes inside a castle, hence my background, <laughs> and, that, and that it's presented by a fencing club, which apparently is Olive's, Goldie's daughter's new obsession. So... Yeah. That that's what that's what we know, and uh, what we also know is we get to see some authentic medieval dancing in costume, which I'm really yeah, looking do. forward to seeing the whole thing. <laughs> oh yes, you do. Um, yeah, I mean, this look it, it, the beauty of doing these movies, uh, re repeatedly doing these movies, is that we get to open the world up a lot more and go deeper into each individual character's backstory. And you know you're going you're going to see uh, a different side uh, to to Marla. You're going to dive into a little bit more in depth side to to uh, Mason's character, oh. and then you know a little bit, little bit. But mm -hmm. I think that yeah. now we're you know you're getting to know the community a little bit more. Sure. Um, you're you know we've I think the that this this movie there's a few uh mystery i don't want to i don't want to give things away but i'm trying sure. to figure out how to say this but there's a there's a there's a there's a couple different mysteries that are un, that need to be uncovered in this in this movie as well it's not just one one uh murder let's say sure. um okay. so you're in so yeah it's just uh, outside of moving the love story along um that we're in a, we're in a, we're in the same castle that uh they shot x-men in so it's very oh, authentic so cool. it's this beautiful castle it's built you know wow. in 300 years ago and it's yeah. uh you know so and we're stuck it's a snowstorm um oh tensions, it's a snowstorm. tensions are high oh we, we introduce a new character uh you start to to see a little bit of Tom's backstory as well. There's a new character in his life that's introduced in this movie that is instrumental to who he is. Okay. That's introduced in this movie, and oh. uh, and so yeah, you see, the, and you're also um, with Brock Morgan's character with Track. He also has his his father. Well, you, I'll tell you that his father comes into this movie. Wow. Um, and so it's it's actually an interesting movie with with for the guys on their relationship with their father. You know, it's like this. Um, it was it it is it's emotional in a lot of ways. Like all of a sudden, waking up in your late thirties or early forties and going, okay, why am I who I am? And mm -hmm. how much of this is my mom? How much of this is my father? And reflection on that. And Tom came from some pretty uh fractured found from a fractured foundation you know with his father being father yeah father yeah his, fa his father was put in prison for murder oh, you know and like he being such a by the book detective and uh you know how how much of that is masked by his past and um and so same with same with uh, track tracks father comes into his life and you see how his father this father son relationship plays out there and um and it's interesting because goldie you know no better actress to play it than nikki is is this muse for him you know is this like for for tom she's this grounding force and she's this person that like allows him to be his true authentic self and say the things that he wouldn't normally say to anybody else because he doesn't really trust that many people um like he's what he says to to goldie so he's able to open up and be this open book and be this and be as vulnerable as he has ever been with her so you're gonna see this like very it's it's um yeah it's a it's a great movie father-son relationships and and uh and also just uh this this blossoming uncovering of you know or peeling back the the, the layers of the onion uh story for for goldie and 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 tom i mean you know 
Goldie is also somebody that Tom constantly has to keep track of and keep in line. <laughs> is that part of being the muse? <laughs> it is. It is. But now I think the trust has been built up and you see this in this movie. Right. The, oh, that's I, good. There, yeah, there isn't that like Goldie, you know, stop getting in, involved. It's not, this is not, this is not your, you know, this is not your, uh, your, your job. You know, this is my job. This is what I'm, I've been trained to do. I know now, and Tom knows, Tom knows now how much of an asset Goldie is to finding finding out information that he can't get from other people because right. she's just this like sleight of hand kind of like smoking mirrors, you know, gift of the gab type of person that is friendly, knows how to get information from people and and uh, and is a huge asset to him and and the police department. I have this image of you standing at Goldie's back door and just this incredulous look on your face pointing at the lock open the door <laughs> every time I think I'm curious Kater, that's the image that comes into my brain is you open the door <laughs> when you catch them with their murder board yeah yeah that's like that's like one of those one of those moments is comes on the spot you know we 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 originally it was like me knocking on the door and going like you know but then i you know i'm kind of this because marla we play we played around with this a lot but marla is actually legitimately afraid of tom you know she's like <laughs> um which we've 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 softened that a little bit in this movie but um i'm always coming in like the dad you know that's what they were saying so or we would be I think it's perfect. I mean, I'm glad you played with that because it's like I said, it's the image that is forever in my brain. It's seared. It's funny. <laughs> well, with delving into characters like that, you've talked a lot about that, but is that something that you find more interesting to do? That kind of series where you can delve further into characters where you don't have to, you know, constantly be starting over with a new co-star and a new set and a new storyline every every movie because that is yeah, that's primarily what you've done on Hallmark is yeah this is, your first, this is your first wheel isn't it it's my first wheel yeah um yeah, yeah honestly it's amazing it's uh it's the it's the perfect balance because we're still it's not like I'm doing a 22 24 episode uh tv show um I'm we get breaks in between and these mystery wheels you, you know, we're, we're shooting them like their own individual movies and each one has its own, it's a beginning, middle and end, but there's still that through line of character. So, um, yeah, I love it. It's the, it's the, it's the best balance between the best marriage between the typical Hallmark movies that we do mixed with, a with the series. Yeah. I got to know, how did you handle the wardrobe? Did you do okay? <laughs> with the puffy sleeves and then, <laughs> i had i had one change for this whole movie and i love that i i despise having to change six times in a day uh... from like scene to scene you know if i'm like shooting day six in the morning and then day 20 on the uh, or whatever it is you know i'm like it's it i don't like having to change outfits so i had one outfit it was comfortable it was really actually it was really comfortable very breathable that's good Great. It was Nikki's dress was uncomfortable. It was heavy and it kind of like would, would put her shoulders over like this. So she yep. always had to kind of had, had to remind herself to put her shoulders back. Yep. Um, Gosh. Which made us have a whole new respect for people that wore those outfits back in the day. You know, Did you, she have to wear a corset? No. Oh gosh! No. Thank heavens, because if she had been stuck in a corset for the whole movie, oh, that I that know. Would have been torture. <laughs> I mean, the dress kind of acted as acted as a corset. Yeah, the anyway, style. So many there was so many ties that she had to tie up in the back, anyways. Oh. But no, Nikki's just you know super fit, so <laughs> she didn't have to wear. <laughs> okay, so we have some. Andrew versus Tom questions for you. Ooh, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay, so one of the last times we saw Tom in Fatal Vows, Tom had quite a shock to the mouth with uh, 
spicy food that he thought he could handle <laughs> and despite goldie's warning he still <laughs> took it and he regretted it a lot <laughs> so how does andrew handle spice the same what? as tom <laughs> Well, I can tell you right now that uh, Andrew handles spice better than Cammy. Because <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even put it in your mouth to try? <laughs> I put it in my, I try spicy food. Oh, I man. will try it. You are braver than I. <laughs> I can't, I can't do spicy food. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the low end of that as well. But yeah. I, I, I like to try some, but it depends what it is. Hey, we've, we've we've got a whole we we've got a whole down the stairs level thing going on here. So that that's oh. great. That's great. All right. So what about cooking? Because Tom, bless him, he tries, but yeah, he 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 ain't so good. Do you consider yourself a better cook or a better yes. baker? What what? I'm better. I'm a better cook for sure than than Tom. I'm not a baker. Okay. Is the baker? she's the cook and the baker but i'm 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 i i have my very i have my very specific things that i do like i'm uh i i'm cook all the meat i do breakfasts i do crepes and pancakes and stuff like that and and frittatas and whatnot in the morning but nice. uh yeah so i have my my other moments yeah yeah <laughs> Well, anytime crepes are in the picture, I consider that a 10. <laughs> so Yeah, it just became my thing. Now I'm getting like crepe pans for Christmas and stuff. And yeah. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Um, well, I know there's probably not much you can say about upcoming projects, but since we are talking about mysteries, you do seem to be posting a lot of mysterious Instagram posts lately. So or do you enjoy doing tease do you enjoy teasing your fans <laughs> what's the tease what we, we I need a decoder <laughs> ring or something to <laughs> exactly yes there needs to be a decoder <laughs> ring for you paul and tyler for sure oh yeah those guys it was so weird that they posted the same thing that i posted on the same day like same day I, same i know especially and then hallmark mystery just popping on and responding to all of you mm. very I quickly just, that's strange. Yeah, it was just yeah. a weird day. I think. I think Paul and Paul and and, and Tyler are just uh, obsessed with my social media. I think they just want. To That's probably it. That's I probably it. They were it. watching. They saw you do yeah. it. And they're like, "Well, we like, should." Oh, this is this way. We should do this. We should do this as we well. We should follow up. Yeah, really. Yeah. Make well, I mean, Tyler, he's family, so you know, of course, he wants to be in the same realm. So he does. He does. Yeah. Poor but Tyler. But without saying any, without saying any details. Tyler. <laughs> without saying any details you do have a few different projects coming up that we can be looking out for yes yeah i can actually plug one um okay. it's called love and honey it's going to air on june 8th it's uh awesome. we shot it in malta mm -hmm. it's a beautiful film it is um kind of like an indiana jones adventure romance movie uh, I, I had so much fun shooting this movie. It was incredible. I think it's, a, I think it's, it, it is one of the most beautiful movies I've ever, I've ever shot in Hallmark. And, wow. um, I think it was my like 29th movie too for Hallmark, but it was, yeah, one of the most. Probably. <laughs> it sounds about right. <laughs> um, and, uh, yes, yeah, just, it just, a, it's different than anything I've ever done because I have, I've never done really an adventure movie, you know, and that, the, yeah. that was kind of the, the main plot was this character that, um, that, uh, I'm an, I'm an archeologist that's searching for this, uh, for this hidden treasure in, in Malta. And I end up. It is Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah definitely a, a departure from the regular Hallmark movies so yeah it, that's exciting to hear about I did Safari Romance last year and it uh it, it was very well received and I I don't know if it was just by fluke or what but look I would love to have any of the scraps that Lacey all the movies that Lacey has done all the foreign movies 
I'll take her scraps and shoot my, you know, my foreign movies. I'd love to shoot, you know, maybe a, a movie or two a year out, outside of the usual Vancouver um, where I shoot in. Cause it's just, it's when you start working with the international actors and um, the scenery, you're just, it's undeniable. It's like, you know, you're, I'm sitting there saying lines with the, the Mediterranean ocean next to me and a castle next to me. And you're like, you're just caught up in it, in it all. Or like for Safari Romance, I'm sitting there, you know, acting with white lions in front of me. You know, it's, you're, <laughs> it's incredible. It's the best. It's, you know, it's, it, 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 it's what, it's a dream for an actor, right? And then to be working with the foreign actors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you catch McLean's uh, Christmas movie that took place in Germany? I didn't. But it was called a Heidelberg Holiday, and he oh, that's spe- right. And he specifically said because he spent time in Austria, so he knew. He, so he spoke fluent German, but he specifically said how much he loved working with the foreign actors. He had never been able to do that before and have a say in who could play one of the lead characters because he usually just got lead characters. I mean, lead actors, but he actually got yeah. to pick the the male interest because the male interest needed to be German. So yeah, he he expressed some of the same stuff that you did. Yeah, it's 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 beautiful. You know, we're Nikki says it. She jokes. She's like, we're in the circus. You know, we're all these crazy people that are creating and like the traveling circus. You know, and and <laughs> but anywhere you are in the world halfway around the world in South Africa or Malta, you're working with these actors that have the same interests and passions as you do. And why, what made you want to become an actor is the same thing, you know, that why somebody else became an actor performance and creativity and imagination and all these things. We're all like little kids just playing, you know, on these, on these sets and, and, uh, and, and and connection too, you know, like these movies are are all about connection. And I think that people quickly realize that this one movie that I did in Malta, um, I worked with this great actress named Margaret Clooney, and she's a she's British, she's classically trained, first time Hallmark act actress, and she two, three days in really started to get caught up and enraptured in in the whole world and and everything that we were doing and and she's like these these movies are are the real deal like these are these are fun and also like you know you're you're building this quick relationship with somebody you know and you have to be vulnerable and you have to be open and you have to be um available and and so i think you know working with with foreign actors that have never worked on Hallmark before they start to realize like, this is, this is a, it's a good place to be. I'm like, I know, I know it's a great place to be. <laughs> Sarah, I think Andrew bugged my computer. Cause I, I think he did too. Cause that was, questions. <laughs> that was almost exactly what your question was. <laughs> oh yeah. Go ask, just go ahead and ask it. Anyway. Okay. Why not? Um, so with the safari romance and the new Malta movie Love and Honey under your belt now, if you could pick a destination for a Hallmark movie, what would it be? Well, there's been some ideas thrown around that we might shoot a sequel to Safari Romance potentially in the Congo with the gorillas. Wow. So that would be that would be amazing. And I think like the destinations I they're not on my list. Like I never thought I would go to the Congo, but now that it's been brought up to me, I, I just keep obsessing about potentially going to the Congo. And <laughs> right. so Leaf Bristow, you know, the producer and uh, director of Safari Romance and uh, his wife Agnes Right. They they write a lot of these movies and Leaf is a busy man. Um and he's always pushing the pushing the envelope. And so he had brought up to me and said, Look, man, Safari Romance has done so well. Uh 
what would you say about going to the Congo next? I'm like, what would I say, Leaf? When do how when do I go? When do we when are we gonna do this? Is the script written? So I think like and and Malta as well. I I Malta wasn't on my radar until I got the opportunity to shoot there. So I think and now that I've been there, I couldn't imagine not going to Malta. Because wow. it's just such a unique place. And there's they shot Game of Thrones there, they shot gladiator there they've they shot napoleon there they've shot so many great epic movies there and um and the history and the uh the culture and um and the people the food i mean everything it's just it's a it's it's like nothing you've ever seen before you know malta um but uh so i don't know may i don't know what next place is on my is 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 would be my dream i think shooting in spain might be a lot of fun you know i've and and uh lacy and chris palaha right now in iceland iceland would be on my list for sure oh yes. man so Sarah, many options. I, think, I think we need to i think we need to get him on <laughs> our texas script and our australian script that we're composing we, we need to do that <laughs> australia <laughs> Australia would be incredible. <laughs> Telling you, we need to have you and Daniel listening in the same movie. And <laughs> Come on. That would be pretty awesome. Put yeah. it in Australia. That would be something to see. I yes. gotta say, that would be <laughs> something to see. You and Dan on the same screen. I'll bring that wow. mustache back. I'll bring that 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 Billy Hamilton back. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd love to work with Daniel. He's a great guy. We have, we've, we're, I've had some great times with Daniel. He's a, he's a, such a sweetheart. In terms of, so that's where you might like to film. Um, but you also, you've been posting a lot of pictures from family vacations lately. Are there any big destinations you'd love to go with the family someday? Uh, or what type of, what type yeah, of trip? Know, I, I, it looked like you were a very outdoorsy family, like you said. A lot of outdoor pictures. Sure, I think. I think the the destinations I want to bring my my I'm, look I'm a big skier and so I I I'm definitely trying to introduce my my kids as much as possible to skiing so we could go on destinations to the Alps and to uh the Andes and you know and just go spend some time in the mountains in remote places um so I think that would be, that's my dream family vacation is like to be in Switzerland with my family or be in, you know, the Italian Alps and skiing and eating great food. I want to go to Japan mm. uh, and ski is such a great, like world-class powder skiing. And, and you got, you know, you ski powder all day and then you're eating sushi for lunch. And so it's a pretty phenomenal place or udon noodles. You're eating, you know, having great broth soup and stuff like that. So I, um, I think those are dream vacations of mine, but, but, but more short term. Yeah. We are, uh, we're doing, you know, we're doing a lot of hikes right now. We're doing a lot of spending time in a lot of in nature and just, we, we have some trips. We're coming, we're going to maybe go to Denmark this year. We're going to Thailand at the end of the year, right after Christmas con this year, we're going to go to, um, take the kids. The whole family's going to go to Thailand so I'm actually only doing two days of Christmas con this year, <laughs> doing um, Friday, Saturday. And uh, what will the fans say? Oh no! <laughs> well, you got you got all the other people. You got to do Tyler. Ty, you go see Tyler. Go see. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of a lot of other people you can go see. Um, uh oh. You do but, realize that at Rama Drama, your line was always the longest. Every, <laughs> yours and ties. Every single time I looked over, he's so. It's only because I I don't stop. I'm a chatty Kathy. That's why. <laughs> I I don't stop talking. So pe my line just adds up. People just keep coming into the line. So. Yeah, you you um, just go ahead and tell yourself that. There, okay. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, Hallmark royalty. If you're doing 29 movies with somebody, you're 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 building up that fan base a little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully people don't get tired of me. You know, that's the, uh, that's the hope. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah. No, no, mm -mm. Thank you. <laughs> my, my, my strong detecting abilities do not see that in the future. All right. 
Yeah, and besides, you can't quit before we sing together again. So no, no. Well, her, I, detect, I, I, her detecting skills, my vocal cords. You know. <laughs> so one last question. This one, this is just something that I was curious about. You started going by Andrew W. Walker not too long ago. It's been a few years, but any any reason with any reason behind that, or just simply because Andrew Walker can be kind of a common name. What? Yeah, you know, the only reason actually was just because SAG uh, ha has an Andrew Walker and oh. I needed to be different. So wow. <laughs> I, added the, I added the W. It wasn't, there was no like grab earth shattering reason. It was just. <laughs> You're not trying to honor a grandfather that you're named after with your middle name or something. Let's go with that. <laughs> That sounds yeah. good. That sounds really good. <laughs> well, it sounds better than, you know, making up the middle initial like Michael J. Fox did. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Andrew, we are seriously excited to see you on our screens again. And it sounds like we have a lot more to look forward to. We've got Love and Honey, we've got Sticks and Scones, another curious caterer. And we've got a Christmas movie, apparently, but you know that was kind of a given. So <laughs> this is this is gonna be this is gonna be quite the year for you, man. It is. It is. Yeah. Very very blessed. Just happy to be doing what I'm doing, and and uh, you know telling these stories, and and hopefully they just keep getting better, and uh, hopefully people just in, enjoy the differences that we're you know that's the that's the big thing now is like really trying to carve out different different style movies and and be in different environments and being in different you know just yeah different different types of relationships and um conflicts and you know so far it's working <laughs> thanks Sarah. Burning, burning question though is yeah. the kiss in the middle of the movie <laughs> the curious the caterer word. huh and curious caterer in oh i know that's not <laughs> that, well i mean hey you know if you want to spill we'll that, take a kiss in that one as well uh, <laughs> i was referring to the romance i was referring <laughs> to the... i mean there's a few almosts the small most uh, the almost <laughs> but uh yeah you you will get a kiss in foiled plans Yay. And it just makes it that much more extravagant with the with the scenery, the castle, and and the and the outfits on as well. It's. I mean, if Tom didn't kiss her in that atmosphere, I know, right? <laughs> missed opportunity, man. Yeah, no kidding, man. <laughs> Doesn't deserve to be there. I know he'd kiss her in the next movie, and she'd be like, "You, you missed the castle. You missed your opportunity." Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was perfect. I'm with, I'm with another detective now. Yeah. <laughs> well, that took me back to the castle. That's it. <laughs> Certainly can't wait. Um, although I'm, I'm, I'm torn. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. My 13 year old is going to be on a class trip all week. They're going to Washington D.C. with their whole class trip for the whole week. Oh, you're and, not going to uh, wait. I know you're not. <laughs> she, she is Adam. She's like, you can't watch Carrie's Caterer without me. Oh, and... <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> so I'm like, no God. I, you want me to wait till Sunday? <laughs> I, oh, so i i don't yeah, know you yeah. gotta wait for her wait for her it's a really tough one it's a really we got, tough one. we got one to one so sarah yes I, cammy's like you can't wait <laughs> you, just don't talk gonna, to cammy over the weekend don't, yeah she will she will she will ruin it um <laughs> <laughs> i love no, she's very nice she's say very, nice say cammy <laughs> but but the the sad thing is my 11 year old doesn't want to wait because she's going to be here with me and she wants to see it when it's on so oh, it's gonna hey, be well it's gonna be really tough they were i both... think you got to do like a flip of the coin or something and say either 11 year old i watch with the 11 year old or i wait with, with the 13 yeah. i mean i can it's always like re classic it. rock paper scissors or something <laughs> i i'm fine re-watching it sunday i'm sure that you know but you know teenagers they don't they don't like to be they like their their way they like their way so yeah. <laughs> so andrew tell people where they can follow you so they can keep up with all of these posts that we need a decoder ring for 
<laughs> well, I have my Facebook fan page group, Andrew Walker Official. Yes. Uh, Debbie does a great job running that page, and she's uh, she's always posting new things and um photos that i send her sometimes i'll do stuff from set and whatnot so um there's that and then i have a walk 35 with two k's that's my that's my instagram it's pretty much where i you know post most of my stuff and then of course uh i i, I do have um uh twitter uh, which is also a walk, but with one K 35 and don't ask me why it's all different, but it's just when <laughs> I started doing the, making the names for everything, it was long time ago and I didn't really think anything of it. So I was like, but now, <laughs> now every name is taken and you can't switch your name, you know? So I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place now, but <laughs> I will be, tw I will be tweeting live, live tweeting oh, good. this good. week uh, on Friday. So yeah, follow along and and hopefully you enjoy. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. All right, Hardies. We hope that you enjoyed this interview as much as we did. Took a couple of turns that we weren't expecting. <laughs> but that's what happens when you deal with a mystery star, right? <laughs> so have a fabulous day, morning or evening, wherever you are in your day. Remember that you're loved and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>